This seminar is aimed to set you on the right path in the complex maze of motorhome insurance. And to help me, I've got Stuart Cray and Mike Love. They're from Shield Total Insurance. They're men who know. Men from inside the industry. I'm on the other side. I'm a consumer. I'm a motorhome user and owner. Um, and I test them for MMM and which motorhome. Now, nobody really enjoys insuring the motorhome. It's a bit like a tax, I always think. If it goes well, you grumble, you pay your money. It doesn't look like you get anything back for it. Um, but that's if all goes well. If it doesn't, and you have that sort of problem, then you'll be very anxious to see whether your insurance company turns out to be a friend in need, or whether it's just a charlatan just interested in fleecing you and doing the absolute minimum under the terms of the policy. So, my first advice is, check when it is that your motorhome insurance is renewal will be due, and then start investigating several weeks beforehand. You do not want to rush into this. After all, for most of us, our motorhome represents a large part of our assets, our savings which have slogged away at work for years to afford. Isn't it worth taking a little trouble to ensure we buy the correct policy to meet our individual requirements? We'll do that far better if we allow lots of time to ring round the various insurance brokers and compare the policies on offer and the cover. It may be about saving money to some extent, but actually, because we're all such courteous and careful and experienced drivers, cover isn't generally that expensive, and it certainly isn't expensive compared to the cost of the vehicle. Every telephone call to an insurer starts with the solemn warning that you must tell the truth and mustn't hide any facts which the insurer might consider relevant. And I believe that because they really mean it. Don't hide a pre-existing medical condition. The fact that you've had your motorhome chipped or remapped. Be assured if you hide something and the claim arises, it will be investigated. And that little harmless piece of information you've got to divulge could cost you a great deal of money and heartache and turn your policy into a chocolate fire guard. You're all here because you're either motor homeowners or you're interested in joining this friendly band of people and spending lots of money on your motorhome. Motorhomes come in all shapes and sizes and they all need to be insured to use the road. Insurance is actually what we call a distressed purchase. This means we have to have it, but we're not overjoyed at the prospect. Andrew's excellent presentation hasn't really left me with very much to say on how to go about arranging your motorhome insurance. So I thought what we'd do instead is have a little chat and try and get straight to the point. And what you really want to know is how much will your motorhome insurance cost? And that's the answer. £236. Anybody here pay that or close to that? Good. Nobody. Okay. There you go. That's the average cost of a motorhome insurance policy if you take it out with us. Some people pay less than that. Some people pay considerably more. But price isn't everything. What I am going to do is to try and give you six quick tips to save money on your motorhome insurance. Tip number one, buy from a specialist broker. There are dozens of these. You'll find 20 odd adverts in the pages of MMM magazine every single month. They're all good. Tip two, move house. Quite seriously, your postcode is the biggest factor affecting how much you pay for your motorhome insurance. Slide here shows the most expensive postcode that we insure, the top of the list, N7, or where insurance is actually at its cheapest, in PL30, around the back of Plymouth somewhere, for those of you who don't know your postcodes. I have a colleague who lives in the NG1 postcode area. That's central Nottingham, or the gun crime capital of England, if you believe the newspapers. But he keeps his motorhome 20 odd miles away in NG32, in a secure storage compound. 
the cost of storage is actually covered by the saving he makes on his insurance. And his motorhome is far safer too. Your insurance is rated based upon what's called your primary storage location, or where you keep your motorhome most often. A third tip I've got for you is to limit your mileage. One of the reasons why all you guys are such good risks is that generally you don't travel very far. The average motorhome covers just 6,500 miles a year. Compare that to the 60,000 miles a year that the average Fiat-based commercial van will actually travel. Discounts are available for reduced mileage. If you go over it, you can always increase it for a small charge, of course. Fourth tip is no claims discount. Use your no claims discount. This is one of the most often misunderstood aspects of motorhome insurance. You can't use your no claims discount twice. If you're using it on your private car, you can't use it again on your motorhome. What we can do, and many other insurance companies do, is we can match your no claims discount with an introductory bonus, which then allows you to go on and earn no claims discount on the motorhome in your own right. Such discounts or bonuses will make a very big difference to your premium. Don't let the kids drive. Okay, maybe not quite as young as that, but you get my point. Adding younger or less experienced people to the policy significantly increases the cost of your premium. This is because the overall rate you pay for your insurance is based on the youngest driver on the policy, even if they only drive the van occasionally. Take security measures to discourage thieves. Alarms, locks, tracking devices all drive down your insurance costs. But what's acceptable to some companies differs according to the particular broker that you happen to speak to. Here at Shield Total Insurance, we like tracking devices. They help us get our insurable property back, usually very quickly. Because they feature so heavily on motorhomes, 40% of stolen motorhomes are actually recovered. Compare that to just 3% of stolen caravans. There are six tips, but I do want to mention claims, dreaded claims. You hope you never have one. I actually kind of hope that you do have one. And that's simply because a claim is every insurance company's shop window. You don't know how good your insurance company is until you make a claim. It's what differentiates us all. If we do our jobs properly and you stay with us after a claim, you'll tell 200 of your friends. If we do it badly, you'll probably tell everybody we meet. I've read in the MMA magazine lots of horror stories about people altering tyre pressure for softer rides, harder rides, and then when an accident occurs, because the tyre pressure is not what it should be, they're not insured. Is that correct? Um, I have to say, I've not experienced that with any of our insured individuals. Um, as long as you are driving a vehicle legally and are licensed to drive that vehicle and you are conforming to the terms of your policy, our policy will indemnify you accordingly. But I can't, uh, I've never experienced anything of that nature uh, previously. Um, I would have thought it would be very difficult because um, a tyre could quite easily um, deflate without your knowledge and may be the result of, of the accident itself. So I, I find that difficult to understand. Um, but as I say, if you're using the vehicle uh, in, in, and conform to the terms of your policy and you're driving it legally and are licensed to drive that, that, that unit, I would say your, our, well, certainly our policy will identify you accordingly.